Welcome back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. So, uh, get ready for the weekend. Yep, we got some fun coming up on Saturday, September 18th. Uh, in fact, so much fun that the Department of Homeland Security, uh, our, our, our folks in D.C., uh, they have issued a warning for all law enforcement people in the area. Uh, they're saying that a small number of recent online threats of violence have occurred. They're saying it's it's uh, it's connected to the uh, Justice for J6 rally. And be on the lookout. Uh, there are a number of online discussions encouraging violence uh, on the day before the rally as well. So uh, Friday and Saturday, they're expecting uh, some violence. Uh, Capitol Police and de- the D.C. Metro Police Departments, they've added additional cops to come on. They've got the National Guard. Uh, anyone in the local area who has civil disturbance unit training will be on duty. Uh, we also know that earlier in the month there was a report that they're going to kidnap a member of Congress. So, hey, fun, fun times coming. And here to share some thoughts on the fun and the entertainment of the justice for the J6 people. I've asked our good friend Jared Yates Sexton to come talk with us. Jared's, Jared's an author, political analyst, and host of the Muckrake podcast. His book, you make sure you want to get this, America, American Rule, How a Nation Conquered the World But Failed Its People. Jer- Jared, thanks for taking time for us. Thanks for having me, Rick. So I'm looking at justice for J6. What in the are we talking about here? These are criminals. What? Ju- yeah, I want justice for them too. I want them behind bars. You know, criminals, political prisoners, potato, potato. Am I right, Rick? I mean, you know, what 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 kind of a country are we living in when people can overrun the capital of the United States of America, try and overturn a presidential election, and try and kill the vice president of their own party? I mean, are are we really going to hold these people responsible? Is that is that is that the America that we all know and love? You know, here's the thing. I'm in this weird spot because I've kind of come around on the on the COVID front to the people who are unvaccinated, maybe not beating up on them as as much as I would want to viscerally and as much as I would, because some doctors have said, look, I understand these people were dupes. I understand they're not smart enough to understand what's going on, that they they listen to people who who were in positions of power and of respect who have abused that power. I look at these idiots who were on there on January 6th who who have been sold this bill of goods that somehow they are patriots, and I want to believe that they're just stupid and fell into this. But look, I know some of them. They went there knowing exactly what they were doing, and I want maximum sentences for every one of them. Listen, I uh, I, I know and love a lot of people who are involved in all of this stuff, like people I grew up with, people in my family, people in my communities, people who refuse to take vaccines, they traffic in conspiracy theories. Uh, I know people who they weren't there on January 6th, but they wish that they could have been. And I have to tell you that anybody who went into that building, whether it was a relative, a loved one, or somebody that I grew up with, they deserve to be punished underneath the law. I mean, that we, we cannot have a country like this. We can't have... Uh, this, this situation where people start popping off on an internet forum and the next thing you know, we have to put up gates and, and cages and pretend like this is anything nearing normal. We, we have to do something about yeah, and this. The thing is, Jared, is we've got a former president uh, who his statement was, our hearts and minds are with the people being persecuted so unfairly. Oh man, that's so gross. Um, you let know, that sink it, in. I mean, let that sink in a second. Just, just, just take that in. A former president, uh, who his number two was, they wanted to hang, which he probably wants to hang too. Uh, but he, hearts and minds, hearts and minds with him. You know, I, I, I watched January sixth, and it was the accumulation of a lot of things that I was warning about. I was trying to tell people that th- these people were going to try and overturn a presidential election. I mean, it was an attempted coup. And the only thing that's actually more upsetting than that is to watch in the aftermath this entire sort of framing of political prisoners. I mean, this is 1930s Germany. 
is what it is. It's it's talking about people who want to overturn a government violently through violent revolution and through subversion. And now we're talking about that they're political prisoners, that they need justice. I mean, this is a really troubling situation that's developing. No, I mean, you know, I look at our society and, you know, today I started the show off, you know, talking about, you know, what I what I came across with with Dr. Nicki Minaj and her uh, and her her vaccine advice. Uh, and and her the extensive research that she didn't do, uh, but she doesn't want anybody being bullied. Uh, how, heaven forbid! Uh, but she knows there are giant balls out there somewhere. Um, I look at this and I'm going, why is this a story? Because it's a distraction. It's the thing that's ma- made to keep us from focusing on what's really important and what's really going on, which is we, the working class of this country, have been screwed for, for decades. And the, the powerful elite, they don't believe in democracy and they don't want us to have democracy. Yeah. And you know what's weird about that is we're talking about the absolute ridiculous ramblings of a multimillionaire. And meanwhile, you know what's not being talked about? The fact that our mainstream publications today, and I'm sure you saw this, Rick, they're talking about how wonderful it is that Amazon is getting ready to construct company towns. And we just can't wait to get back to company towns where, you know, everybody's life is completely taken over by a corporation that determines not just how much they're paid, but what resources they get and, and, and basically every facet of their lives. You're exactly right. We are a country that is addicted to and completely and utterly distracted by all of these giant, weird, bizarre stories that have nothing to do with our actual lives. And meanwhile, the plundering and exploitation just continues and it grows by every single day. And the question that I keep coming back to is how how do we how do we get back from this? Because I do remember, you know, maybe just vaguely a time where we had serious journalism. We we had serious people uh, we as a society listened to smart people, respected intelligence, not belittled it. I, I don't know if it's possible to go back to that place. You know, in this current moment, and, and you know, I, I appreciate people like you. I appreciate people who talk about serious things. And meanwhile, mainstream media chases things like Nicki Minaj and the story about cousins and friends and Trinidad. Uh, what, what actually is happening in this country is that I think a large group of people, I think that there, there, there is a movement towards sensibility. I think there are people realizing that they're being exploited and that things are uh, uh, turning in a way that is destructive and inhumane and exploitive. I actually think that there's a groundswell towards that. I hope Um, so. All of this distraction, all of this garbage, all of this nonsense that we're talking about right now, um, I think it's a lot of people who are very, very desperate to change the conversation and the fact that even the next generation and growing numbers of people realize that this system and, and, and this status quo has to change. No, you're, you're right. And and I hope you're right. I hope this is actually happening because, you know, I was talking about this earlier today with a friend. I go, you know, the sad reality is the giant, you know, Nikki and the giant ball story got so much airtime. And yet you've got workers striking in five different states at Nabisco trying to get better wages, hours, conditions, a bit of a bit of personal respect and dignity and if some family life work balance and things that would actually make people's lives better. Zero on the media frame. Uh, I couldn't find a story anywhere today on it. Uh, and, and, and this is this is the kind of stuff that frustrates and angers me. Yeah. And, you you know, speaking of people that I love and I care about, I I know tons of people right now who are having to work everywhere from 60 to 80 hours. Yep. Mandatory right now. We're talking about factories. We're talking about industry. We're talking about all these corporations that refuse to hire anybody. They refuse to pay their people what they deserve. Uh, any, Any even sniff of organization leads to these factories and businesses either going over the border or just being shut down altogether. But I do feel like we are watching the beginnings the, the birth pangs, if you will, of something that might be a revival of whether or not it's unionism, solidarity, or some sort of a revolt against this absolutely exploitive regime. I, I, I do have hope right now, but I will say that it is really, really dark and foreboding at the moment. But isn't that the argument, you know, just what you've laid out, isn't that the argument that the right tells their people that your life sucks uh, and, and not, you know, not where we, I think we would go that, you know, we've got these corporate elites who, who do everything they can do to crush organizing and hold wages down and, and, and make working conditions horrible and all of the things that, that we see 
they've created an alternative universe that it's it's not the it's not the billionaires it's not the ceos that it's those poor people coming from other places that it's the others it's them that's making your life miserable and it's you didn't live up to the expectations that we sold you as kids uh, and they, in the same vein, think that they're rising up and organizing to take us to some utopian place. Uh, or am I missing something? No, you're you're dead on. I mean, what the right has done, and this has gone on for centuries, but there are movements against this. There are times where people start to realize what's up. And this is one of those moments I actually do believe that. I think that Trump was able to tap into to that in part. And I think Fox News has been able to basically blame all of this on the New World Order, the deep state, and currently they're in the QAnon universe. But at the end of the day, you can be mad about Mr. or Mrs. Potato Head you can be mad about Dr. Seuss, but by the time you go home, you have still completed a 75 to 80 hour work week. And the next thing you know, you look around, you're like, this isn't about immigrants. This isn't about people of color. This isn't about the new world order. This is about us versus them. This is about the working class versus the exploitive class. And I think that's what we're talking about here is, is a lot of people who have hidden behind these conspiracy theories and all this fear mongering and white supremacy I think they're starting to, to look up on this. I think they're starting to actually think it over, which is uh, the inevitability when you hide behind these yeah, things. So you, 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 you seem to think we're going to see an old school kind of, of moment where we have to decide which side we're on. Because, look, I know a lot of working people who think they're going to be the next Jeff Bezos. Uh, I think Steinbeck called them embarrassed millionaires. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at that going, you know, which side are you on? And and, and I, that's a question that I've been asked for, for decades. And when I was a kid in high school, uh, when we were talking about which political party we would be part of, it was a which side are you on? Are you on the side of, of the wealthy or on the side of the working class? And, and, and those those things are very apparent to me. You know, Rick, when I'm not uh, moonlighting as a leftist subversive, uh, <laughs> I'm spending my time inside the classroom and a, as a professor. And I have to tell you, the next generation, they know what's going on. They know what's happening. They they have no uh, they have no idea that they're going to end up with the you know the three or four bedroom home with the two car garage. I mean the the illusion of the meritocracy and anything uh, even resembling a humane economy. They know that that is straight up garbage. So I, I I do think that reinforcements are coming. I think the cavalry is just over the ridge. It's going to be a matter of how we fight and what we look for at this yeah. point. We'll we'll eventually get there. I just may not be there with you. Is what you're telling well, me. <laughs> you know what, Rick? We will remember you fondly is what we'll do. <laughs> no, because look, I'm, I'm hoping it's sooner as opposed to later. Because I've said this before. I don't want my kids to have to fight the same battles that their grandparents had to fight. I mean, you go back to, you know, to the Great Depression era. Uh, you, know, you know, my grandparents' generation, they came back, fought World War II. They came back and fought in the workplace to build the most prosperous working class in the history of civilization. And we've basically given it back away. And they're unfortunately going to have to fight those same battles because I'm privileged in the fact that like you in classrooms, I get to get out and talk to workers in the streets and they tell the stories of horrible working conditions, extraordinarily long hours, poverty wages in some cases and health care costs that are literally killing them. And yet they're afraid to organize. They're always looking over their shoulder. The boss's presence is always there. And I'm looking to the next generation going, I hope, I hope you've got the courage and the passion to move forward where these folks haven't. Yeah, you know, I, I grew up in a home of uh, FDR Democrats. I, I, I grew up around people who believe that the Democratic Party was supposed to be the party of the working person. And I, I and I watched that get savaged in the 1980s into the 1990s. Yep. And, and, you know, there are the there are ups and downs with these things. But I think that the foundation is there. I think that the working class people of the United States of America, they recognize what is happening. They simply need some to speak to them. They need some sort of a movement that will coalesce and lead to solidarity and organization. I, I think it's coming. Right now, this moment is very frustrating and, and very dangerous, is what I will say, because those illusions that were sown by people like Ronald Reagan and the people who basically, you know, manipulated him like puppet masters, I, I, I think we're still living in that reality, but it feels like we're getting ready to wake up from that illusion. Yeah, and, and talking about the danger, I'm looking at this weekend's uh, Justice for J6 rally, 
Uh, and and like I said, the Department of Homeland Security, they're preparing. Uh, I'm hoping there are going to be six National Guard people for every MAGA hat wearing moron who shows up, uh, you know, claiming they love the country while ready to stab somebody with the American flag. And, and I'm looking at this going, you know, I I think back to Jay Gould, the, you know, the, the railroad magnate of the 1880s, who said I could easily pay half the working class to murder the other half. And I'm, I'm looking at them going, that's it in action right there. No, that's exactly what's been going on this entire time. Uh, the wealthy and the powerful in this country understand that their only means of survival and maintaining power is to manipulate people and to keep them living in this alternate reality that you had already mentioned. This, this world where they're not the ones exploiting, it's the people of color over here, it's the immigrants over there, it's your neighbor, it's the people that you're supposed to trust. Um, but that's a very, very thin veneer. You know what I mean? Like it, it has no truth behind it. It has no actual substance to it. And the moment that you actually speak truth to it, it starts to disintegrate. The question at this point is whether or not we can get beyond this moment of crisis with MAGA and QAnon and, and all of these conspiracy theories, because they are very fragile and brittle. The question is, how do we get beyond it? And, and I, I think we will. I truly yeah. do. Well, I hope, it, but ultimately it comes back to us and, and us having some kind of rational filters uh, where we, you know, like, look, to be honest, I looked at the Nicki Minaj story at first today and I just blew it right off. I didn't even, you know, it wasn't until I saw it seven or eight times. I'm going, what the heck is this about that? I actually spent 10 minutes looking into it and then going, this is insane. Uh, it just, just crazy. Um, last question I got for you, the, the big, the big justice for J six, which is just ridiculous. Uh, the big rally this week. And are we expect what, what kind of crowd do you think we're expecting? If you looked at last week, they had that big, uh, supposedly going to be a 10,000 person rally with the, my pillow guy. They got like 250. Are we expecting a repeat. I, I love that any conversation about this has to involve a pillow magnate. Uh, who is a former crack addict. Um, so in, in, in this entire situation, the question in January 6th was the, the, the real pinnacle of this. The question is, how many extremists, how many white supremacists, how many domestic terrorists are going to be there, and how many people can be pushed into creating violent action? I haven't seen anything from my research and my observance of these groups, and I keep a pretty close eye on them. It doesn't seem like this thing is going to rise to that level, but right. I mean, listen, we are living in crazy times. Yeah, we most certainly are, but Jared, I appreciate you taking some time for us. Uh, great talking with you, my friend. Thanks, buddy. Good stuff, Jared Yates Sexton. Make sure you pick up his book, American Rule, How a Nation Conquered the World but Failed Its People. Quick break. Right back. Stick around. You're listening to The Rick Smith Show. We're working people. Come to talk. Remembering that united we bargain, divided we beg. Rick Smith.